We have a very concerning weather pattern that's about to unfold, so we're going to walk you through the details to keep you as safe as possible. Let's take a look at the cross the Atlantic. You can actually see we've got a kind of conveyor belt of moisture that's coming off the African coast, and it's really kind of holding together. That's pretty indicative. A lot of that Saharan dust is starting to subside, and we've got a lot of upward rising motion air across this region. Definitely concerning as we're heading towards peak season of hurricane season. So we're starting to see a lot more storms start to come to fruition. There is now Hurricane Franklin out there across into the Atlantic, but definitely more concerning is down here into this, this Invest 93L. That is forming, it's got a 90% probability, and that's the one that we're gonna be concerned about heading into the Gulf of Mexico and could impact Florida by the middle of next week so let's show you this uh, saharan dust i mean remember just a couple of weeks ago we were showing this pretty much across the board across pretty much the, the main development region back into the caribbean and really a lot in areas into the gulf of mexico which tended to shut the the tropics down but now it's definitely starting to subside and shifting back over across Africa. So that's allowing a lot of these tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa to kind of hold together on its own. And the more time they're able to do that, the better probability they're able to start spinning up and form some sort of tropical entity. And that's definitely concerning as we're heading towards, you know, peak season, but closer to home across the US, we've had this dominant ridge of high pressure that's been baking much of the country. Now that's actually going to be replaced with a welcome cool down that's originating across the Great Lakes. They're feeling the effects this morning and that's taking a beeline southbound. So that's those crazy record high temperatures are going to be replaced eventually with some normalcy down here across the deep south. But while we're waiting for what might be coming out of the Caribbean and heading into the Gulf of Mexico. So if you're new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel. And I would love to reach 200,000 followers by the time end of the year. So definitely help me do that by hitting the subscribe button and you can get all my daily content you know, on this channel. So let's take a look at the satellite view this morning. And wow, look at that convective complex. Those are some deep cold cloud tops. That is definitely indicative, especially a lot of the lightning trying to wrap in towards the center, right? So this is this is an area that came across, that was down there into the Central American region down in the Eastern Pacific. It has now crossed over and taken advantage of a lot of that deep ocean water content areas down here in this region. It's off just the coast of the Yucatan and that's, you know, inhibiting the development right now because it's close to Cuba. But once this actually transfers and gets into the Gulf of Mexico, I think all bets are off. We're going to have a formidable storm. We're going to have a name storm. And it would be the taking the name Idelia as it continues to lift northbound. So we're going to be watching the exact timing of this trough, this cold front that's going to be coming through. That's ultimately going to be, you know, depending on the path of this system but looks like looks like uh we've got a couple of days uh to track this storm because it might not make landfall until around wednesday time frame but for today we've got to be concerned about another convective complex that's going to be highlighted across uh por southern portions of missouri especially in the southern portions of illinois getting into uh, western tennessee western kentucky that's a convective complex little mesoscale convective system that's going to be bringing some high winds, maybe some larger hail with this particular type setup. But nonetheless, these are definitely going to be packing a punch with these uh, with this system. So definitely be on high alert within this region and into the heart of the afternoon. And there is uh, Franklin out there that yes is is now officially a hurricane, when likely going to be uh, a major hurricane. But luckily, you know because of the strength of the trough that's coming in, that's actually going to be pushing. Franklin well out to sea. So that's not gonna be impacting uh, the US at all. And you can actually see this and where the trough is by the time we head into Monday, right? So yeah, it's a pretty good cool down for you know, August standards. This is definitely a welcome relief. I mean, all these areas had just intense heat, intense you know, heat indices as well. That's actually gonna be replaced with somewhat normal, if not below average temperatures and lower humidity too. So this trough sneaks in, you can see pretty much the Eastern two thirds of the US takes advantage of this 
this cool down while the west coast continues to uh, remain well above average uh but that's also what's going to be allowing this system down there in the caribbean to drift into the gulf of mexico and likely yes depending on the timing of this uh, cold front and where all this is going to play out and where the center is going to be ultimately tracks the demise of where it's actually going to be making landfall into uh, florida but right now we've got about a 90 percent probability it's going to be forming right so this is likely going to be a named storm by the time we do tomorrow but in about 24 hours this is uh, it's already looking like it's trying to get its act together and once it crosses over to the gulf yeah i do feel it's going to be taking a name so even then we still got about four days uh, tr to track you know this particular system but you can you can see we've got more waves coming off the coast of africa less saharan dust more upward rising motion air so that's more elements of the puzzle saying hey we got greater probability of these things kind of holding together and a lot of the things that we look for let's walk let's walk you through the the, the the what the path of what may be ideal here this is the shear complex right so there is some shear it's not it's not a lot but it definitely it's definitely weak enough to allow this system to really take advantage of this environment down there into the gulf and start to become a little bit stronger especially as it heads closer uh to the coast so this is your vertical velocity index we take a look at this right so all the reds those are your sinking air that's that's when the air is sinking it tries to lift up in that atmosphere but it squashes down like a pancake not much precipitation that comes out of that front but where you see the deeper the darker greens that's where you have the most enhanced upward rising motion air coming off the coast of Africa it starts just to side so it's not the greatest but it's still up over there across the portions of Florida it's still lightly shaded green where we do have somewhat of an op upward rising motion air masses to keep these storm origination a, a lot alive as well so that's one element another element is the sea surface temperatures and definitely what's concerning with this system once it crosses into the gulf notice the reds here right they get deeper and darker the closer to land you get so that's definitely concerning this is going to be one of those systems that could be a weak storm down there in the gulf but as it gets closer to land it's going to be continued likely to be strengthened and likely going to be at, at its peak intensity at landfall so definitely don't take your guard down with this just because hey it's just a little little 40 mile per hour or 45 mile per hour tropical storm it can't don't make say it can't be a hurricane by the time it makes landfall so we'll be watching this but definitely concerning the most intense sea surface anomalies are literally right there by the coast as well so also another element is the deep ocean water content so those are what's going to be at the surface this is what's down bound you know beneath like a half a mile deep right so the darker the reds the the, the, the you know the higher the uh, heat is down there in the deep ocean water content and this is where it's at now that's why you got the cold cloud tops that's why you got the lightning firing around the center and that's why we feel like this is going to be a storm in about a 24-hour time frame this is crossing over this is your little loop eddy this is your uh, loop current down there in the gulf of mexico which is always prone to higher heat in it in itself and this is going to be having to cross over that as well so that's definitely another element of the puzzle that's concerning and now let's take a look at all the models where it could possibly be going right so it's hanging off the coast of cancun right now it's taking a little vacation <laughs> but it's going to be heading into the gulf of mexico and it's going to be prime taking a target towards florida so areas back in say destin panama city down all the way down into tampa it needs to be high alert from this uh, particular system as as it uh, most of the guidance here has it taken a beeline towards florida and it's really within this zone exactly where maybe the center might actually come ashore so but here's the cold front i mean i can't you know this is this is uh this is the cold front definitely welcome sign all these record temperatures are going to be taking a back burner for at least a couple days <laughs> as a return to normalcy what actually normal a normal summer would actually feel like down here in these regions instead of widespread triple digits you're talking mid to upper 90s i mean across a good part of the south maybe some 80s down there and uh for highs in oklahoma yes further south you go but this is the cold front that makes it almost all the way down there into houston so 
I think Houston hit a all time, you know, 109, at least tied that record from the year 2000. So it's been definitely some impressive heat. So any little break they can get from that, they will take it and it's coming. So be hang tight. It's going to be there for a couple of days, but that's also going to allow this system to head head into the southeast. So here's the latest uh, GFS run. And this has pretty much been consistent. Even this time yesterday, it even had it take it down to a 980. That's exactly where it is today. So we're starting to see a lot of consistent model runs. That's why the compounding factor was when the cone does come out from the National Hurricane Center, it's going to be pretty close, right? It's going to be con pretty congealed together. Because uh, a lot of the a lot of the models are like that way too, so yeah, it, it definitely appears it's likely going to be making landfall. I think you know my gut tells me it's going to be probably to the right of this, uh, but nonetheless, here's the European ensembles kind of showing all of its members, essentially from Destin to Tampa, pretty much having it as a strong tropical storm or possibly a weak hurricane at that point. Uh, but yeah, this is the area that definitely is in high alert with this uh, particular storm as it likely will be continued to gain strength. Here's the latest Wentzwath uh, from the GFS guidance, takes it inland, has it about a minimal hurricane. Uh, this would spread its winds, tropical storm force winds into uh, Alabama as well as into uh, Georgia. Remember, tropical systems, right front quadrant loaded. So where it comes in, this is your this is your uh, you know your left side basically your west side that's your kind of your drier side east base loaded right front quadrant loaded was where the higher impact higher rain higher wind threat would likely be but definitely a big time rain producer right so it's got a lot of you know two uh, you know high 2.0s uh, even three inch per hour rainfall rates right so it's got a lot. You know when it is as at the peak in these blues that's that's the higher water content just hanging off the coast right so once it hits that atmosphere it's got a lot of fuel to work with right so this is a, a, an area of concern and it's spreading its heavy rains very heavy rains not just you know along the coast but well inland and through georgia through the carolinas and heading through uh, portions of North Carolina as well. So the breakdown over the next seven days on, on the precipitation front. So we're gonna have that system come in, right? So we're gonna have that trough. There's the setup for today. That's your heavier rain with the severe storms across this region. And then you have some lighter amounts filtering in with the, with the cool front, right? So not much in Texas, not much in Louisiana. Hey, well, they'll take what you can get along this cold front, whichever, everything they can squeeze out of that precipitation. We still got some little lingering leftover rains from Harold, which, which was Harold down there in South Texas. But definitely what sticks out is your heavier rains across the Southeast. So these are gonna be multiple inch totals. We're likely gonna be having some flood watches with these regions. So again, we're about five days out from this system, but it looks to make landfall somewhere around Wednesday timeframe, spreading the heavy precipitation and some of the higher winds well inland and definitely the heavier rains Wednesday and Thursday, you know, across this region. But it's going to be replaced with some much comfortable conditions. So these are actually highs on Wednesday, folks. High press, highs. Look at that in the Great Lakes. Hey, man, you with 50s, right? 50s in Michigan. That's, that's highs, folks. That's some nice stuff. That is definitely, that is some definitely nice stuff. Those folks down in the South are, are kind of jealous, right? So, I mean, yeah, anytime you can get, there's hardly any hundreds on the map, right? There's definitely hardly any hundreds on the map showing up on you know your last day of you know he heading into the 30th 31st time frame but we got the ridge of high pressure it only lasts for a couple of days the all indications the ridge definitely comes back from the deserts and it's going to be parking itself over the southern plains again on labor day weekend heading into your labor day so expect very high temperatures, widespread triple digits across this region, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma, back into Kansas again, into portions of Missouri. That first week of September looks plenty warm, if not hot across a lot of regions. And there's not much cooler air to speak of, right? So that cool down is gonna be short lived, gonna re be replaced by a dominant, another ridge of high pressure across a good part of the middle central two thirds of the United States. 
and that's going to be replaced with drier conditions so very wet from wednesday through friday of the next week and going to be replaced with drier air with that ridge complex coming back across the middle of the country and the only wet in town is going to be the pacific northwest where you're going to have those cool downs come in and you're going to have those heavier rains as well so guys I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update where I protect you before and after the storm.